morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you're on a medication and you want to wean yourself off of it, if you or a loved one has, has a health challenge that you want help dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. 6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase the longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the bright side Ben team off our website as well for a one time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business if you're an entrepreneur. If you're entrepreneurially minded, it's a great way to enter into the health world. The world of health of nutritional supplementation has helped you you or a loved one, and you want to help spread the word and make some money at the same time, please sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can also get your products at the wholesale price for that $25 fee. You can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog stories and news posts, blog posts and news stories up at all our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for more information. And I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products. TruthTreatments.com is the website. TruthTreatments.com. All our Truth Treatment products are retinol 5% gel, Truth Omega-6 healing cream, Truth Transdermal Sea Balm, and Truth Transdermal Sea Serum voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, emulsifiers, surfactants. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Check them out at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Okay. Welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. Continuing on with our top strategies for maintaining heart health, which is particularly important for anyone stuck on prescription drugs for cardiovascular disease, beta blocker drugs, or calcium channel blocker drugs, or ACE inhibitor drugs, or diuretic drugs, or, or even statin drugs, for that matter. Make no mistake about it. As with any progressive chronic and degenerative disease, heart disease is reversible. Heart disease is reversible. And it's not reversible with drugs. It's not reversible with any procedure or device or anything else you can have done in a doctor's office or in a hospital. But with nutrition, with nutritional protocols, with lifestyle protocols, blood fats can be reduced, plaques can dissolve, blood pressure can drop, the heart can get stronger, and it can all be done from the comfort of our own homes, from the comfort of our own living rooms and kitchens. Dr. Nathan Pritikin, Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Caldwell Esselstein all took patients with advanced heart disease and using diet and nutritional protocols reversed advanced heart disease. 
If you or a loved one is dealing with heart disease, get a book called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Caldwell Esselstein, or Esselstein, E-S-S-E-L-S-T-Y-N. He was an, uh, uh, Dr. Esselstein is a, a uh, physician, an author. He was an Olympic rowing champion, and he's the author of the book. He's 83 years old, still practicing. And his book is a, a wonderful resource for anybody dealing with heart disease or anybody who wants to prevent heart disease using nutritional protocols. This idea of using nutrition and non-toxic, non-doctor ways to keep ourselves healthy is the basic theme of this program for all health challenges, but especially for heart disease, which despite medicalization is still the leading cause of death by far in this country, the number one cause of death in this country and around the world for that matter. And drugs aren't going to help you folks. Cardiovascular pharmacology, cardiovascular drug medicine, basically involves forcing the body to do stuff it doesn't want to do, forcing the heart to do stuff it doesn't want to do, forcing the heart to pump faster, to, or forcing the, the heart to pump harder, using so-called sympathomimetics, that's drugs that mimic the stress nervous system, that activate the stress nervous system. Yes, they will actually give you drugs that activate the stress nervous system to make your drug pump harder. Or uh, conversely, they'll give you drugs to slow the heart down, neuroblockers, nerve blockers that cut off the nerve energy to the heart to reduce its work. This is the medical model at work. This is how the medical model works. It imitates the stress nervous system, uses drugs that imitate the stress nervous system to force the, pump, the heart to pump harder. Or uh, they'll suppress the energy, the nerve, nerve energy that goes to the heart to make it go slower. Sometimes drugs will use, uh, doctors will use drugs that open up blood vessels, things like lisinopril or captopril, or uh, perhaps they'll reduce the volume of the blood with diuretics. Diuretics are perhaps the mildest heart medications, but they still have side effects and toxicity. Diuretics will cause you to lose minerals, specifically electrolytes, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, all of which are critically important for the heart. How do you like that? You take a diuretic to help your heart and you lose the electrolytes that help the heart. This is the stupidity. This is the crazy idea of, you, of drug therapy. You take a drug that is supposed to improve cardiovascular functioning, but it causes a loss of nutrients that are, are important for cardiovascular functioning. It's like statin drugs. You take a drug, a, a statin drug to lower your cholesterol, but it causes you to, uh, to not make as much coenzyme Q10, which is truly one of the most important nutrients for the heart. Just the craziness of this medical, uh, this drug medical, pharmacomedical strategy of improving health. Just absolute idiocy. Given the critical role the heart plays in the health and functioning of the body, there's pretty much no way that you can compel the heart to do anything, to work harder, to beat slower, to change the circulation in any way without causing some kind of health issue. All drugs are toxic, of course, but few are more toxic as a class than the cardiovascular drugs. Even aspirin, which is used to thin the blood and improve circulation, is not without toxicity. It's associated with increased bleeding. It can even increase your risk of a stroke. You can get an increased risk of hemorrhagic stroke, of a bleeding stroke, by using aspirin daily. And if you are on aspirin therapy, it's important to note that you shouldn't stop suddenly because you can have a rebound effect that will increase your risk of a heart attack and may be life-threatening if you stop your aspirin suddenly. So if you're on aspirin therapy and you want to wean yourself off of it, do it carefully. Don't just stop suddenly. Aspirin can increase the risk of pancreatic cancer. Aspirin can increase your risks of kidney damage. And we don't even know if aspirin really works. According to the War for an Aspirin Study in Heart Failure, the so-called WASH study, published in the July 2004 edition of the American Heart Journal, there was no evidence that aspirin was safe or effective in patients with heart failure. Researchers concluded, quote, the Warfarin aspirin study in heart failure provides no evidence that aspirin is effective or safe in patients with heart failure. The benefits of warfarin, also known as Coumadin, for patients with heart failure and sinus rhythm have not been established. Blood thinning therapy in patients with heart failure is not evidence-based but commonly attributes to polypharmacy, that is taking lots and lots of drugs, unquote. And that's from the American Heart Journal, July 2004. Of course, the biggest problem with aspirin therapy and all medical intervention, particularly with drugs, is that these strategies and protocols divert us from the real causes and the real solutions to heart disease, which are always, always, always going to be lifestyle-based. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. 
Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about heart health, cardiovascular health issues of any kind that you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you have a, if you, uh, have a success story you'd like to share, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to join the bright side, Ben team, start yourself a longevity business, or just get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee. Call 866-735-2470 for more information, or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so if you're on a prescription drug and uh, you're dealing with heart disease, if you're on a blood thinning drug or you're on a beta blocker or calcium channel blocker, please understand it's not going to do anything to prevent or to reverse your condition. At best, it's going to maintain you, but at the risk of toxicity, the same toxicity that's associated with all drugs. I'm, t- I'm telling you this as a pharmacist. There is no such thing as a drug that does not have toxicity. It is in the nature of drugs to force or compel the body to do what it doesn't want to do. The logic is astoundingly stupid to compel the body to do what it, uh, to compel the body or the organs of the body to do what it doesn't want to do. But we don't have to worry about that because all of these chronic degenerative diseases, whether we're talking about heart disease or whether we're talking autoimmune disease or we're talking any long-term progressive chronic degenerative disease, which, by the way, accounts for 80% of our health challenges in this country and probably some similarly around the world, these are all lifestyle issues. And once we understand this concept, we'll be able to do our own business to take care of our own health without the medical model. And that's the goal here, folks. Take care of our own health without the medical model. And with that in mind, here are some ways to keep our hearts healthy without hideous prescription drugs and useless medical procedures. We talked about a few of these on our last Brightside episode. There's a whole bunch of them I've, I've compiled. The first thing is change the way we eat. Eat less. Caloric restriction. Caloric restriction will reduce the workload on the body. It will uh, uh, help conserve precious nutritional resources that are better off spent on recovery, on healing, and building tissue. Patch up a leaky gut. Eat less sugar and processed foods. Keep our blood sugar stable. Diabetes and heart disease go hand in hand. They're pretty much the same thing. They're part of what's known as metabolic syndrome. Treat yourself like a diabetic. You know what? Everybody should treat themselves as if they were a diabetic. And it doesn't matter if you've been diagnosed as a diabetic or not, as we've said many times on this program. The the official diagnosis is arbitrary. It's based on arbitrary numbers. Pretty much everybody after a certain age is going to have some degree of messed up blood sugar or dysglycemia. So it's just a good idea to eat less sugar and treat yourself like a diabetic. Keeping your blood sugar stable can be accomplished by eating more protein, by eating more good fat, by eating less sugar, by exercising, by drinking water after your meals, by drinking water first thing in the morning, and of course using nutritional supplements, which we'll talk about here in a moment. Calm down, lower stress hormone, reduce cortisol. When cortisol goes up, circulation suffers. When cortisol goes up, it's a very good likelihood that you're going to end up with some kind of cardiovascular health issue. Just reading an article this morning, which I'm trying to find here as I talk to you. I don't know where the heck it is. This is from, uh, uh, where the heck did I put this thing? Cardiovascular consequences of cortisol excess. This is from uh, Vascular Health and Risk Management, published in 2005. A review details changes induced by short-term cortisol administration in heart health. Cortisol stress hormone, you do need a little bit of it. But excessive stress hormone is going to mess up the heart. It's going to mess up every, every system in the body. Relax. Meditate. Do not underestimate the emotional component of cardiovascular health. One of the most important impacts of emotional instability is going to involve how the blood, how, how the blood moves through the body. And no surprise, cortisol elevations are associated with heart attacks, as well as hypertension, as well as elevated blood sugar and obesity, all markers of heart disease. One of the best ways to reduce cortisol is going to be uh, to meditate. Meditation has been consistently found. And there's a lot of studies on meditation, by the way. This is not just new age gobbledygook. There's a lot of medical studies, a lot of research that's been done on meditation. And consistently, meditation has been found to lower cortisol levels. 
The relaxation response produced by meditation triggers the brain to uh, produce dopamine, to produce serotonin, to produce oxytocin. Oxytocin is the love chemical, the love molecule. You meditate, you get more love energy, biochemical love energy. Oxytocin uh, supports your, uh, your uh, body's ability to de-stress. Oxytocin improves our ability to react calmly in stressful situations. Oxytocin lowers blood pressure. Oxytocin, uh, elevated oxytocin levels have long-term calming effects, up to three weeks after meditation. And you don't have to be a Buddhist to meditate. Just sit and watch your thoughts. Sit and watch your breathing. Basically, meditation is just watching. Watching your thoughts, watching your breathing. Neurologically, meditation puts you into what's called an alpha brainwave state, or sometimes a theta brainwave state, both of which are associated with improved heart health. Another great relaxation and cortisol-lowering strategy involves massage. I've always said that if we really cared about health in this country, we wouldn't need Obamacare. We wouldn't need the Affordable Health Care Act. We would have national massage insurance, where every American is guaranteed one or two massages a month. Massage lowers your cortisol, uh, lowers cortisol levels. Massage also uh, increases serotonin levels. This is from uh, the International Journal, Journal of Neuroscience published in uh, July 2005, cortisol decreases in serotonin and dopamine increase following massage therapy. Why is it that toxic drugs are about health and they're covered by insurance and not massage, which is not only non-toxic, but also supports healthy biochemistry at every level and is especially helpful for reducing stress hormone. Exercise, build connective tissue. We said last week that building connective tissue is not just about appearance, it's not just about anti-aging, it's about building a strong circulatory system. Your blood vessels are largely composed of connective tissue. Building connective tissue builds healthy blood vessels. Building connective tissue also supports heart health by feeding cardio, uh, cardiocytes, heart cells. And weightlifting as well as aerobic exercise are both important for cardiovascular health. I used to tell you, well, aerobic exercise, everybody knows aerobic exercise can improve perfusion, circulation, improve oxygenation to the heart, but it turns out that weightlifting and resistance training are also important. This is according to the American Heart Association, by the way, not just me. Use foods and supplements that help build connective tissue in addition to exercise. Make sure you're using your whey protein, your slender FX, your keto FX. Use vitamin C. Use your glucogel caps, aloe. Use gelatin. All of these are very important strategies for building connective tissue. Eat good fat, saturated fat, butter and coconut oil, and the fats that are found in avocados and fish and organ meats. They contain uh, these kinds of fats, particularly organ meat fats, contain what I call the cholesterol complex, which is important for heart health. Good fats from organ meats contain cholesterol, contain vitamin A, contain vitamin K, contain vitamin E, contain vitamin D, in addition to good saturated fat, all of which are important for heart health. Eat saturated fat. Yes, eat saturated fat, particularly from coconut oil and butter. Oh, by the way, there's a medium and short chain fatty acids that are found in saturated fat and foods that contain saturated fat, particularly coconut, also important for cardiovascular health. Eat coconut oil. Eat butter. It's good for your heart. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Right side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about heart health or heart disease or heart drugs or any kind of health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, we are here for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment, so hang tight. We do have lines open at 844-236-6010. From the Journal of the Lancet, being active saves lives, whether a gym workout, walking to work, or Washing the floor, physical activity of any kind can prevent heart disease and death according to this large international study involving more than 130,000 people from 17 countries. It was published this week, actually last week in the journal, The Lancet. Move your body. You don't have to go to the gym. I've been saying this for, I'm saying this for years. You don't have to have a membership at the gym. Just moving the body. Moving the body opens up blood vessels, improves circulation, improves mental health. 
improves the health of the connective tissue as well as the rest of the body. It's critical to move the body. Our sedentary lifestyle has got to be one of the major causes of uh, this very disturbing increase in chronic degenerative diseases that uh, not just in this, uh, people are experiencing not just in this country but around the world. Move the body. According to uh, UC San Francisco, gut microbes may influence multiple sclerosis progression. Now, this isn't something that's going to come as a surprise to anybody who's been listening to this program. I've said it, said it last week. We had a caller talking about multiple sclerosis. I say it almost every week. The key to reversing degenerative diseases, the key to reversing autoimmune diseases specifically involves gut microbes. This is the heart, the core, the center of, epide of our chronic, disease, uh, chronic degenerative disease epidemic, mm -hmm. dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. Now, in addition to using probiotics like the nightly essence from Longevity, and everybody should be on it, particularly if you're dealing with an autoimmune problem like multiple sclerosis, and multiple sclerosis is just a poster child for autoimmune diseases. Any autoimmune disease benefits, anybody with an autoimmune disease will benefit by using these kinds of strategies to restore the health of the gut bacteria. You gotta get on the nightly essence. You gotta use fiber. Fiber acts as food for probiotics. Grind up your own flax seeds. Grind up your own chia seeds. More fiber means a healthier gut. More fiber means a healthier gut microbiome, a healthier, gut back, a healthier uh, spectrum of gut bacteria. And you have thousands of different bacteria, thousands of different types of bacteria that are living in the gut. And anything you could do, do to support their health is going to be in your interest. And you know what? We're all drinking chlorinated water. We're all drinking fluoridated water. We're all taking antibiotics. So it's almost impossible to have a healthy gut these days. If you're uh, unfortunately born cesarean section, chances are really good you're gonna be dealing with dysbiosis. And many folks who are in their 50s and 60s are dealing with this kind of problem. Even if you're healthy, even if you have no frank or blatant symptomology, the chances are pretty good that you've got messed up gut bacteria if you're not taking care of, of, uh, of the bacteria in the gut using probiotic supplements, using fermented foods, using fiber supplements. And vegetables, by the way, have uh, uh, fermented vegetables, I should say, have three mechanisms for supporting uh, gut bacteria. Number one, you'll get the fiber. Number two, you'll get the bacteria in the fermented vegetables. And number three, all vegetables, including fermented vegetables, are a source of nitrogen, which is very important for gut bacteria. Here's a juicy one. All, uh, another Alzheimer drug hits the rocks. There's another Alzheimer's drug that supposedly was going to do something or support uh, uh, pay, uh, the health of patients with Alzheimer's disease, a drug called Axovant, unfortunately. Or Axovant is the name of the company. Where's the, I, don't even, I don't even see the name of the drug. Uh, I don't even see the name of the drug here. In any case, you cannot deal with Alzheimer's disease or dementia with a prescription medication. There are no prescription drugs for dealing with Alzheimer's disease. Why? Because Alzheimer's disease represents a degenerative condition of the brain. It is impossible. To, consider, to reverse degeneration with prescription drugs. It's impossible to reverse degeneration anywhere with a prescription drug. So if you're dealing with a degenerative disease, and make no mistake about it, Alzheimer's disease is just that. Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease for that matter, and Huntington's disease, and any brain disease, is a degeneration of the brain the way arthritis is a degeneration of the joints. Alzheimer's disease is arthritis of the brain. And just like there's no drugs that can reverse arthritis, although there are drugs that can hide the symptoms of arthritis, there are no drugs that can reverse Alzheimer's disease either. On the other hand, as with all chronic degenerative diseases, there's lots of strategies that we can use to slow down the progression and maybe even reverse any neurodegenerative disease, any brain degenerative disease, including dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. It starts off with, surprise, surprise, the gut microbiome. It starts off with good bacteria in the gut. Patch up a leaky gut. That's another great strategy for dealing with Alzheimer's disease. Watch the way you eat. Are these, are these strategies sounding familiar? Same thing for dealing with heart disease. Same thing for dealing with cancer. All degenerative diseases have the same causes, and all degenerative diseases have the same strategies and protocols for their reversal. Once we nail this down, there's not going to be any need for me. And that's what any good healthcare therapist should be looking for, to make themselves irrelevant. Any healthcare professional who's worth his weight in salt, as they say, 
His number one job is to make himself irrelevant. And once we understand that chronic degenerative diseases are based in our lifestyle, it's based in how we live our lives, there's not going to be any need for doctors. There's not going to be any need for uh, alternative health care practitioners like myself as well. Here's another one. This one is from uh, the Food Technology and Industrial Techn Food te the uh, Food Technology Division of the Industrial Technology Institute in Sri Lanka. New extensive research shows coconut oil has no risk for cardiovascular disease, and then coconut has great promise for treating heart disease. I love coconut oil, and I know there's a lot of controversy around coconut oil because it's an oil. Nonetheless, there are so many benefits to coconut oil, it's just a shame to throw out the baby with the bathwater because of this concern about rancidity. Coconut oil is very stable, by the way. It doesn't really go rancid. Other oils go rancid, and, and I can see why people, nutritionists that I like and trust, would say that you want to stay away from vegetable oils, and probably you want to be careful with vegetable oils. I just think that vegetable oils have too much health value and therapeutic value and medicinal value to just completely throw them away. But you do have to be careful with them. You don't have to worry about coconut oil as much because it's stable. Saturated fats don't break down. A saturated fat is a hard fat, like lard or butter or coconut oil. These hard fats don't break down anywhere near as readily. That's why you can keep butter. You can keep butter for months. If you keep it in the refrigerator, do you ever see butter go bad? I've never seen butter go bad. Maybe after years it will. Saturated fats are stable. Liquid fats are unstable. You never want to heat a fat, by the way. And that's really where problems come from oils and fats is when they're heated. Coconut oil, on the other hand, can be heated, can be resolidified, can be heated again, and it ha it's just so many benefits, including uh, heart-healthy vitamin E, including saturated fats. Coconut oil has actually been shown to lower cholesterol levels. Coconut fat has uh, these really specialized fats called medium-chain triglycerides, which have been shown to be very helpful for folks dealing with atherosclerosis. We've talked about medium-chain triglycerides or medium-chain fats as being important for the ketogenic diet, which is the ultimate heart-friendly diet, by the way. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll get your phone calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got more good health information. And you and your phone calls coming up right after this. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. Let's go to San Diego and say good morning to Cliff. Hey, Cliff. What's up, buddy? Hey. I really appreciate listening to you, Dr. Ben. I've learned a lot. Um, Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. Pharmacist uh, Ben, though. Pharmacist Ben, sorry. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm kind of dangerous. I've been self-educating myself for the last 12, 15 years. And, uh, Good for you. I just want to get straight. And I want to get on the, I think I'm doing a lot of things right, but I want to kind of switch to the longevity thing. Um, okay. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly what I need to be taking. Um, the only thing I really struggle with, I'm, I'm, six, I'm 62 years old. I'm 62. I'm 190 pounds. Nice. I, I'm I sorry, have a cocaine you... problem. Meaning I um, you know what, Cliff? You're cutting out, buddy. You're cutting out. Can you get me off speaker if I'm on speaker? Uh, right. uh, I'm losing you there. I'm not sure if it's... Okay. You're I'm, I'm, I'm in, the, in the middle of nowhere. But, uh, okay. Now, I heard you say um, something about cocaine. You got a cocaine issue? Well, sugar. I call it sugar cocaine. Okay, gotcha. Are you hooked on sugar? Uh, well, yes. Yeah, it's only at night, I think. Good care of myself throughout the day, then I do stupid stuff at night, right? Okay, gotcha. Is it, is, is it associated with uh, alcohol or anything like that? No, I mean, I might drink three or four beers at most. Um, but yeah. It's not like you're having a beer and then you, it's not like you're having a couple of beers and then you just, your willpower drops and you go grab some sugar. It's just when you get home at night and you're relaxing, you want sugar? Exactly. Right. I got gotcha. you. So, Switch. and the only the, the biggest effect is my sleep. I've tried every kind of natural sleep thing. So, about two three months ago, I started taking Ativan, which I, I don't like taking any prescription drugs. So, um, so you anyway, can't that's, stop that's it though. Much, Once you're on the Ativan, yeah. you can't just stop it because you're not going to be able to sleep without it. Okay, so so, so help me. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so here's the deal. You obviously, you, I'm sure you recognize that after you eat sugar for a while, you're going to be hyped up, and it's going to be hard for you to fall asleep. So if you are jonesing on, I mean, if you absolutely have to have sugar, the evening is the worst time you can do it. You're going to do it. There's no really good time to do it, but uh, the evening is going to really, it'll cause problems with you. It'll definitely interfere with your sleep. Try to use more fat, number one. That's one way. Coconut oil, for example. You do it maybe a half a teaspoon of coconut oil. Also, and this is kind of interesting, if you mix sugar, or I should say, if you mix something sweet with fat, it will amplify the sweet taste, and you'll get, uh, you'll get more bang for your sweet buck, so to speak. You'll get more, uh, more enjoyment or more pleasure from the sweet taste. And when you're going for the sweet taste, go for honey instead of sugar. I'm, now, I shouldn't say instead of because honey does have sugar in it, but honey tends to have, uh, also has enzymes in it, has vitamins in it, has a lot more nutritional value than straight sugar. So uh, weaning yourself off the sugar by using a mixture of honey and coconut oil can be helpful. Also, honey and coconut butter can be helpful. Another thing you might want to try is small amounts of frozen fruits. Like get yourself some organic cherries, organic frozen cherries, for example, organic banana pieces, frozen. The reason uh, you want them frozen is because they'll last longer in your mouth. You'll get more, you'll get a slower release of the sugar and you won't have to eat as much of it. Uh, if you suck on a, a, a cherry every few minutes or a couple of blueberry, frozen blueberries every few minutes, you'll get a little bit of a hit, a hit of sugar with, uh, uh, in combination with, uh, 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 with the nutritional value from the cherries and, and blueberries. Blueberries are, are really loaded with good nutrients in them. Another thing you might want to do is green tea before you go to bed. Uh, green tea, can, uh, decaffeinated of course, green tea, uh, contains a substance called theanine, which is very relaxing, and hot liquids and hot fluids can neutralize some of that drive for sugar. So using hot liquids and hot fluids may help you. And here's another thing you might want to do. There's a very interesting amino acid called glycine. Have you heard of this? Not. Okay, G-L-Y-C-I-N-E. This is for anybody who wants to wean themselves off of sugar. Glycine is very important for detoxification. Uh, glycine deficiency is not unheard of. In fact, I had a guy, uh, a, a friend of mine who was a chiropractor, who used to do glycine testing on patients, and he found that most people were deficient in this very important amino acid which is, plays a critical role in detoxification and is also very important for fighting wrinkles and for keeping connective tissue strong. Glycine is a component of connective tissue. Hey, Cliff, i got to let you go, man. we got a really, really bad, uh, really bad background noise there. But, but listen in because I'm going to answer your question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to answer your question there at length. Uh, sorry about that, Cliff. I apologize. Um, so glycine is a really interesting amino acid, important for detoxification. It's also an important component of connective tissue, which means it's going to be heart healthy and bone healthy and important for fighting wrinkles. But here's the neatest thing about glycine. Also, glycine has some relaxing properties, too, and that can help you sleep. Glycine has anti-epilepsy or anti-seizure properties. Just amazing amino acid. Many people are deficient in it. But here's one of the neatest things about glycine. It tastes like sugar. Yes, it tastes like sugar. In fact, you'll be hard-pressed to tell the difference between glycine and sugar. So get yourself some glycine capsules, break them open, and uh, just you put a little, bit in, uh, a little bit in some coconut oil, and you'll make yourself like a sweet coconut oil. You won't have any of the side effects of sugar. You won't get any of the jitteriness. It won't affect your insulin, uh, but you will get the sweet taste. It's not exactly, exactly like sugar, but it's very hard to tell the difference between glycine and sugar. Uh, you can also use glycine in your lemonade or in your tea, and in addition to sweetening your beverage, will also give you the, all the substantial, I mean substantial benefits associated with glycine. Glycine, by the way, is found in any kind of connective tissue-based foods like bone soup, cartilage, uh, cartilage uh, that's in, on, the, uh, on the ends of chicken bones contains glycine. It's just a wonderful, wonderful amino acid, and I've been meaning to talk about it for a while now, but I've been just so distracted with these other subjects, I haven't gotten to, uh, gotten to mention it. But for you, Cliff, that might be something that you want to consider. Uh, so let's see what uh, anything else I could tell you. After you do your sugar, by the way, if you are jonesing on sugar and you're, and you're uh, eating sugary foods, uh, drink lots of water. That will help dilute your blood sugar. That's one of the best diabetic strategies that I can think of, anti-diabetic strategies, is just simply drinking water. Also, drinking your Beyond Tangy Tangerine will help you metabolize the sugar. Using the Sweeties will help you metabolize the sugar. Magnesium, selenium, uh, chromium, vanadium, these are all wonderful uh, uh, sugar metabolizing nutrients that you can use. Um, if you can exercise a little bit after you eat sugar, it might be hard at night, but if you can exercise a little bit after you eat sugar, if you fall off the wagon, if you're a diabetic, going for a walk after you eat your sugar, that can help. And here's, here's a worst case scenario. If you absolutely positively can't eliminate the sugar or the sugary foods, just do straight sugar. 
just do a teaspoon of sugar, straight sugar, straight sucrose. It's not really good for you, but it's sure better off than eating processed foods like cakes and pies and candies that contain sugar. And also the combination of sugar plus fat can really be problematic. If you do a sucrose in a, fatty, in a fatty form, when you eat your sugar, your insulin goes up and that will increase the storage of fat uh, and it'll make you fat. So the real problematic foods are foods that have sugar and fat combined, combined with them. I said earlier, by mixing honey with a little bit of fat, you'll get more bang for your sugar buck, but that only works if you do a tiny little bit. If you're eating ice cream or potato chips, <clears throat> both of which are sugar, or donuts, in fact, all the foods we really love and we crave are combinations of sugar and fat. Uh, if you eat lots of sugar plus fat combination foods, that's where you're going to run into a problem with elevated blood fats and, and uh, weight gain. So if you're going to absolutely positively can't wean yourself off of sugar, in addition to using nutritional supplements to help your body process the sugar, in addition to drinking more water to help dilute your blood sugar, in addition to using fiber to help suck up the excess sugar, uh, just do straight sugar instead of sugar plus fat combinations or sugar that's found in processed foods. I'm not saying straight sugar is good for you, it absolutely is not, but it's better, you're better off eating straight sugar than you are some kind of processed food or fat sugar combination. Uh, let's see, anything else I could think of here? That's, that's, that ought to cover you. The B vitamins, by the way, are also very important for helping the body process sugar, particularly vitamins B1 and B3, niacin. Niacin on its own is extremely important for cardiovascular health and for helping, uh, helping wean yourself off of sugar. And niacin is part of something called the glucose tolerance factor. And uh, vitamin B1, the glucose tolerance factor, by the way, is a complex of molecules in the body that helps the body use sugar. And then uh, vitamin B1 or thiamine is wonderful for helping mitigate some of the negative effects associated with sugar, especially attention Deficit disorder, ADD and um, uh, concentration issues that children have is often associated with thiamine deficiency, often associated with uh, excessive sugar intake after you, uh, kids eat Pop-Tarts or, or uh, breakfast danishes or sweet sugars or sweet sugary cereals or sugary beverages for breakfast, it's really important to get them on the B vitamins. Your Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a wonderful source of the B vitamins, including thiamine, and that can help reduce some of the untoward effects, untoward mental effects associated with excessive ingestion of sugar. All right. Thanks so much for your call, Cliff. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And think about joining The Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, and I'd love to have you as a member of The Bright Side Ben team. Also, our Truth Skin Health products are up at truthtreatments.com, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, all at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.